I'm Steve Leon from Victory Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome to Daily Hope. You know, the Bible is full of verses about the importance of prayer. Take, for instance, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Or Colossians 4, 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Or Ephesians 6, 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. There's no doubt that learning to pray and actually doing it is a vital part of staying connected to our Father in Heaven and that it is a pure gift to pour out our hearts before Him. But that's not to say that we don't get weary in well-doing, is it? Indeed, it's easy to get discouraged. Mark Batterson, pastor of National Community Church in Washington, D.C., has written on the power of prayer and how that power launched, sustained, and grew National Community Church into the multi-campus, high-impact church it is. In Batterson's book, Circle Maker, he tells the story of Conrad Hilton, a hotelier struggling to make ends meet in 1931 during the Great Depression. Americans weren't traveling, hotels were suffering. Hilton was actually borrowing money from a bellhop so he could eat. It was during those difficult days of the Depression that Hilton came across a photograph of the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. The Waldorf was the holy grail of hotels. It had six kitchens, 200 chefs, 500 waiters, and 2,000 rooms. It even had its own private hospital and railroad. In retrospect, Hilton observed that 1931 was an outrageous time to dream. But that didn't stop Hilton from dreaming, and dreaming big, praying hard, or thinking long. Hilton clipped the photograph of the Waldorf Astoria out of the magazine and wrote across it the greatest of them all. And then he placed that under the glass top of his desk. And every time he sat down at his desk, his dream was staring him in the face. Nearly two decades came and went. The world changes, and America enters the Second World War. And all the time, Hilton kept circling the Waldorf. Hilton acquired an impressive portfolio of hotels, but the queen, as he called the uh, Waldorf, eluded him. Several attempts to purchase the hotel failed, but Hilton kept circling it in prayer. And finally, on October 12, 1949, 18 years after drawing a circle around his dream, Hilton made his move. How did he do it? It wasn't just his great business acumen, negotiating prowess, or hard work and vision. The true answer is revealed in his autobiography. It's the answer Hilton learned from his mother, who had prayed circles around her son. In Hilton's own words, My mother had one answer for everything, prayer. Go and pray, Connie, she would say. Take all your problems to him. He has the answers when we don't. Hilton followed his mother's advice, and his persistence paid off. The final section of Hilton's autobiography is titled, Pray Consistently and Confidently. Here, Hilton provides a succinct summary of his approach to business. He writes, In the circle of successful living, prayer is the hub that holds the wheel together. Without our contact with God, we are nothing. With it, we are a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor. Next time you drive by or stay at a Hilton Hotel, remember that long before it was bricks and mortar, it was a bold prayer, a long shot, and a long thought. Hilton certainly celebrated the acquisition of his big dream, but he never viewed the queen as his greatest investment or accomplishment. His greatest privilege and potential was kneeling before the king. That's what made the queen possible. You see, the queen was always subject to the king. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, uh, it is so easy to grow weary in well-doing, to kind of give up our prayers. We pray earnestly 
and sometimes it feels like heaven is silent. So God, we revive us in our calling to pray, to be people of prayer, to simply surrender into your arms of mercy those for whom we pray and the situations about which we pray, and then just trust you, and to trust your Holy Spirit to translate our sighs and groanings into words before your throne of grace. And there we can leave it confident that you hear and that you answer in your good time and in a way known only to you. We ask it for the sake of Christ. Amen. Thanks, friends, for sharing these moments with me. Have a blessed day, remembering that you are loved and you are never alone.